Welcome back guys to another episode of the Frank and Vet Experiment. I'm your host Frank and Vet and I just wanted to go over with you guys actually what it was that I did when I decided to uh, rebuild this uh, AR pistol into an AR firearm. Uh, what all the parts that I, I really decided that I needed, why I decided I needed them and kind of how it's going so far. I mean I, I put probably close to about a thousand rounds through this so far and um, honestly uh, well you'll see. Let's go check it out. Alright guys, like I said, this is my Franken rifle. It is an AR um, firearm. Originally it was actually an AR pistol, and uh, if you guys don't know this already, uh, you can always go from the AR pistol to a firearm to a rifle. You just can't go back the other way. Uh, it has to do with some legalities in the NFA. But first and foremost, what I want to tell you guys is, th again, the reason why this is not an AR pistol and this is an AR firearm is because, yes, it does have the pistol brace. It has a pistol buffer tube. Um, but the actual total length is over 26 inches and what I mean by total length it's actually from the back of the buffer tube itself to the uh, front of the barrel um, without the muzzle device unless the muzzle device is pinna welded in which point it's part of the uh, barrel otherwise as you guys know it's not but the reason why is because once you get over 26 inches uh, and you have a barrel that's shorter than uh, 16 inches it's still a pistol as long as you have a pistol brace, except for if you put a forward hand grip. If you can't put a vertical hand grip onto an AR pistol, then it becomes an SBR. Unless, again, it's over 26 inches. And this is actually longer than 26 inches. This is actually 27 and a half. Um, I'll roll in a photo right here, just in case, if you guys want to know. Again, I wanted to go over what it was that I put into this, why I did it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not just really thrown together. Some of it is, but most of it, there's reasons for everything. So we're gonna go ahead and start from the rear back here. In the rear we have the uh, SBM4 pistol brace. If you guys, because I'm sure you guys have seen this before a thousand times, uh, a lot of people swear by them. And to be fair, when I very first built my AR pistol, I used one of the CAC blades. It's a great pistol brace, but especially after the ATF came out saying that you could shoulder a brace in certain circumstances, shouldering the CAC brace got a little rough so I kind of wanted something a little more rubberized a little more comfortable as well as something that could you know grip onto my arm the right way so that's why I went with this underneath it is the Midwest Industries extended pistol buffer tube so it does, still doesn't have the uh, six position rail on the bottom but it does push it out and it's actually meant to be used with a 10.5 inch barrel to bring it up past that 26 inches and so that's the reason why I went with 11.5 but we'll get into that later but it does work and it works great so that's inside here then we can move forward and the next thing you're gonna see is we have a Magpul a rubberized MOE K2 plus and that's the plus if you do do the K2 or the, uh, the MOE grip you guys know it's that polymer plastic the K2 plus is this right here it's beautiful it's just a little more comfortable for some of you guys you're like ah oh, it's magical you're going to go with the bravo company or you're going to daniel defense grips that's fine but especially since i do a lot of standing and shooting and, and moving and shooting uh, having that more vertical grip it just really feels good in the hand set back real fast i did pull a magpul asap rear plate and really i'll take this off so you guys can see that you guys can see right there decided to move to qd especially since can't put any QD attachments onto your brace because you'd be modifying it and then it becomes an SBR and we all know that that's bad. You know, ATF starts coming calling. Uh, so after that, this is just an AR stoner uh, upper. It is forged. Uh, I know all the issues everybody talks about with forged uppers. They're not as pretty. Uh, you could have a variance between the, the rail and then your foregrip rail. Honestly, I like forged. It's strong. I've never seen anything that actually shows me that having a billet or any other kind of upper is better. 
what I'm looking for is strength as well as it does have M4 feed ramps in it. So I can't complain there at all. And so far it's been working great. Below that is an Anderson lower. You know, it's just your standard, you know, Franken, Franken build Anderson lower. Nothing crazy about it. I know a lot of people have had issues with them. I currently haven't had any issues with them. This actual lower has probably had close to 10,000 rounds through it and currently no issues. So I'm not complaining about that. It's just a lower, it works, throw it on there. Uh, inside there is a Timony 4.5 pound single stage trigger with anti-rotation pins, zero creep, and it really is 4.5. It's a beautiful trigger. Quick note, if you guys are going into the military or you are in the military and you're just starting to get into AR building because you want to kind of do something better than what you're issued, that's great. Don't change a trigger out till you get out unless you're in a special unit and they allow you to use a different trigger. And the reason why I say that is because when you start getting used to those lighter triggers, those better triggers, it's going to make your shooting with your service weapon a lot harder. Trust me, I was there, I did it, and it screwed me up a lot. So just a note for you guys. Otherwise, let's keep going. Uh, it's Magpul rear Embus sight. Uh, that's your Magpul backup sights right here. Polymer. Some people hate them. Some people are okay with them. It, they work. Uh, again, they're backup sights. Uh, I run Red Dot, and the Red Dot I run is it's fairly reliable. Uh, I never had any issues with it, and I'm going to be doing, actually by the time this is posted, the review on the Hollow Sun 503CU should actually be posted, so I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to that, so you can go check that out after this. But, we'll get back to this build. In here, we have just a standard Lancer mag, fog, FDE, nothing crazy, it's beautiful. And they run, they run great. Uh, so, they, I, they, my, I prefer them over a Magpul uh, PMAG, but you know, I still run PMAGs all the time too. So, and that, the only reason why is because it's still polymer, but it has those metal feed lips on it. So, it makes it just a little bit more reliable. Uh, I never had any hang ups with them. Yes, it still has the anti tilt follower. So, if you guys were looking for, like, I don't know, I'd, I'd say it's probably the, currently the best magazine out there. Um, in my personal opinion and we all have our own personal opinions right so uh after that uh let's back up one real fast again we're gonna go into the buffer assembly right here if you guys never seen one of these before these are actually a jp captured spring assembly it's beautiful if you guys ever use captured springs inside like your glock or in an xd or anything like that uh, you guys can be kind of familiar with this. You have your weight at the front, you have your stop at the back, your guide rod in the middle and the spring behind it, pushes through, and this pole just goes inside of your BCG. So you have that whole hollow area, it just feeds inside. And the great thing about this is you don't have the uh, scraping. You guys always hear that ching ching noise, makes it sound like a toy in your ARs, and that's your buffer spring scraping on the inside of your buffer tube. So beautiful thing great for suppressed as well for me I actually noticed a little bit of a difference when it comes to your BCG coming back kind of has that tilt and you can kind of get that when you're using a traditional buffer assembly so this is nice because it doesn't it just comes straight back comes straight forward and it's guided by that rod so captured spring assembly this is actually a heavy one and I wanted to do that because this is a short barrel so you're gonna have a lot more wear and tear it is 11.5 so it's not as bad using a carbon link gas system gas impingement but I will say that I'm definitely happy it's super reliable they are a little bit more spendy instead of spending 30 bucks on a buffer assembly you're coming up you know over a hundred dollars for a buffer so that sucks but you can get different weights also for the springs themselves uh, there's whole kits on that but great thing to go with and the whole reason why is because I just wanted more accurate more consistent lockup every time and to help that out is why I ended up going with the Sharps Rifle Company um, XPV Bolt Carrier Group, which is pretty much just the Reliable and the Balanced Bolt Carrier Group. Now, if you haven't checked that out, I suggest you go watch some videos. I will give you a quick overlay, but I do want to do another review later on for this. Still testing it out. We're only about, I'd say 500 rounds to 1,000 rounds into this right now on this firearm. Uh, if, you, if you look on top right here, it's actually cut down on top compared to a traditional bolt carrier group. You see, you have it more rounded. And what they did is they actually took a lot of the weight off the top there. On this one, it's, it's there, it's traditional. They took it off and so most of the weight's lower there. Uh, and then you have your riding points. And those are places that actually have friction, which is obviously down here on that raised area as well, right next to the gas key. 
uh, and that's traditional, both of them have it. Now the cool thing about this one is, is not only does it have this custom porting on the back to release some of the weight in the back, but then it steps back up so you have riding points all around, kind of making sure that you're not going to get that carrier tilt every time you're going back, you know, it just, obviously it's not that dramatic, but when you fire, shoots back, rides forward, goes like that. With this one, having those that weight in the back, it balances out just a little bit, as well having less weight on top, it can cause it to go back and forth, just a little bit smoother. If you've never seen the uh, uh, reliable the lugs on it, mostly, I think all the, I mean, all of them are different than the traditional. I'm gonna do a comparison right here. Um, they're not squared out. And one of the nice things about that is, is this doesn't lock up at all. Even if I ride the charging bolt or charging handle forward slowly, uh, the only time there's ever any lockup and doesn't go all the way in is if the latch just sits on top uh, on the charging handle. Otherwise, uh, this just goes right in smoothly. No, I'm not torture testing it. You use some lube, and I, I wipe it down before I go shooting. Um, and when I come home, it is a little bit dirty. We just got back from shooting, so. I do need to clean it, but again, this diamond ring is, is more than just your standard code nickel boron where it sits on top. This actually bonds to the metal itself. They use S7 tool steel, super strong with proper heat treating. If you guys heard anything bad about the Reliable uh, before is when they first came out, they had a bad heat treatment and they were causing bolt, or bolt lugs to snap uh, and usually within the first 100 rounds or so. Like I said, I'm about a thousand rounds into this at this point, so I haven't noticed that at all. Uh, if anything, this thing has been super reliable, paused the lock up every time, and it, it, it seems to be writing beautiful for me. We'll, we'll get into a deeper review later on. I just kind of wanted to show you that. Set those down over there. Keeping going, moving forward. Again, uh, I'm using the Hollow Sun 503 CU. Again, we're going to be doing a review on that. Just uh, actually, like I said, you should be able to, we'll have a link in the description. You can go check that out. I am using a Troy Industries bad lever, uh, if you want to see, yes, this lower in the air pistol was spray painted before, if you don't like it, that sucks. It's my gun, and this is America, so, America, I do what I want. But, otherwise, again, moving forward, we have a Midwest Industries 3G, so they're Gen 3, 10.5 inch, free floated rail system with M-Lock instead of key mod. If you like key mod, you're perfectly fine. I prefer M-Lock, I think it looks nicer and sweeter. Uh, but this is the light model, and what you're going to be getting with the light model is obviously you get the normal rail system, you get a little tiny bit of M-Lock rail on there, but if you look on top, you have M-Lock on here, instead of having more rail, they actually cut it down and then they're using the M-Lock to, uh, to port it as well, so it's just a little bit less weight. And just, I mean, as well, the great thing is, is for you guys that do the whole C-clamp like I do. Uh, when you come over top, you're not you're not putting your hand on top of that rail, uh, and as we know, sometimes it can be a little sharp, so it's not going to cut it up. I use gloves, so I'm not cutting up my gloves every time I put my hand over top of it. Uh, it makes it a little bit smaller, and you know, I don't got huge hands. I'm not a big guy, so uh, being able to, to put my hand over top and just really lock onto there uh, and feel like I got a good grip on it, it keeps that low profile, and it's really nice, but it does come back at the front, so you have some of the Picatinny rail on the back, and as well on the front, so you can still mount your front side posts or whatever else you need. Uh, and as well, you can put more railing on here uh, if you do end up needing it. Like, say you're trying to put a, I don't know, IR device controller, like push switch, or your light push switch on top, and you don't want to zip tie it, some, it has a Picatinny rail mount on it, you can still do that. But for me, I don't need to worry about that. Uh, one thing I did forget is I do have a BCG Warfighters, or Gunfighters medium charging handle. As you can tell, it's a little bit worn down. I do like to shoot this gun a lot. So, and honestly, I bought it because it looks good. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I like the angling on it. it. I think it looks pretty. As well as the medium, I mean, it's good retention, good lockup, and you know, I don't need something super small, super big. It doesn't really get caught on my gear. Uh, like some people like to say, you just grab it, you go. Not that big of a deal. So. For the barrel, we're using a Roscoe 11.5 inch bloodline. It's their, I guess, SOCOM OEM barrels. It is 11.5. It is a one in seven twist rate. Uh, for those of you that don't know much about uh, barrel twist rates, essentially, uh, when you start going down in your twist rates, like one in seven and blah, 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 so forth and so on, that's gonna be going more towards like uh, heavier rounds that stabilizes them better. So like your 
62 grains, 75 grains uh, versus your 55 grains. Now, this gun itself for me is a home defense, uh, close quarters, CQB type of a weapon system. So, how much stabilization I need, what distance, I'm not huge on, on range, you know, I'm shooting close up, somewhere between 0 to 150. And I can, I can hit with this at 0 to 150 easily, I can probably hit out to 300, but we're not going to go into a lot of the ballistics at this point. This is just an overview of this gun. So just so you know, uh, it's not a huge thing for me. I still shoot 55 grain when practicing, 72 grain for home defense. That's kind of why I went with it. And it is a military contour barrel. It's a little bit heavier uh, than my other ARs and stuff, but it, the whole reason why I built, rebuilt this thing was because I was using my AR pistol more than anything else because I, I do enjoy the close quarters type of stuff. For me, tactical shooting, it was getting to the point where the, the cheaper barrel, I, uh, the last AR pistol, when I first built this, I, I, I tried to build it for as cheap as possible, and I think I ended up doing it for less than 500 bucks. But then I ended up using it almost every time I went shooting, every time I was training, and I was starting to get to the point where I was wearing everything out. So that's why I went back and reinvested in everything to make it last longer. And the military contour barrels are going to be a little bit better. This is a nitride finish on the barrel. I know you can't see it. Uh, but the bloodlines do have a nitride finish. I will say that so far this has probably been the best barrel that I've seen, even from the packaging when they sent it, um, all the way through to running it. It's super consistent, super reliant, doesn't have any issues, and I I'm loving it. You know, maybe it's the bolt carrier, maybe it's the barrel, I don't know. but. I love it, it worked, but we're going to get a lot more rounds through it before we actually do a review just on the barrel itself. So look forward to that. Uh, for right now, we're just going to keep training with it and seeing where it goes. Uh, on the front, we have a Surefire War Comp. It is neutral keyed, just so you guys know. Uh, I do want to start shooting more with my left hand or off hand, so I wanted to neutral key it so that way it works. I will say that I hate shims. This is the first muzzle device that I've had where I've used shims instead of a crush washer. And from now on, I'm going to go have somebody else do it. I, I like to do most of the stuff on my rifles myself. I am a tinker. Uh, I like to play with toys and I like to build toys. But those shims suck so bad. And the instructions were so confusing. Honestly, it felt like I was trying to read Arabic. Not my, not my best time. So. Uh, from now on, like I said, it's on there, it's running, I haven't had any issues, it's not coming off, it's not flying down range, so I, I assume I did it right. But, yeah, definitely not my, definitely not my forte, I'll stick with crush washers, or if I have to put shims on, uh, I will take it to a gunsmith there, or my local armory and have them do it. But yeah, so again, we're gonna move forward, we do have a MOE, uh, vertical forward grip on here, again, this is not a... SBR, it's not a pistol, it is a firearm. It does run into the same category as the Mossberg Shockwave, so it's not really anything, it's not all other weapons, it is just a firearm. It's very hard to define, uh, and, and, and if you guys are, are not okay with getting so much into that gray area, or you know you want to understand more about it, that's fine. Um, you know, just go with the, an air pistol. This is an air pistol if you take off that vertical foregrip. So, but otherwise, yeah, the vertical foregrip makes this a firearm. So, it just makes it easier for transporting across state lines if I need to, going shooting with friends, whatever have you. Uh, but just a note, when you do change this from a, from a pistol into a firearm, it is not covered under your concealed weapons permit anymore, depending on what state you're in. So you can't have this thing loaded underneath your seat or anything like that. But this, this thing is, again, uh, 27 inches without the uh, brace and without the muzzle device, another, what, 2 inches, yeah, 2 inches can be a lot, uh, another 2 inches on the muzzle, as well as probably another inch and a half, 2 inches on the brace, um, we're looking at over 2 feet, I'm, you know, 5'8", I'm not hiding a 2 foot long firearm on me anywhere without somebody seeing it, so. Not so worried about concealed weapons for this. This is, again, this is a home defense weapon. This is a training weapon. This is a CQB style of weapon. But yeah, uh, like I said, if you guys got any questions on what I put into here, why I put it in here, and all that fun jazz, uh, go ahead and go in the comments below and let me know. Alright guys, uh, as always, if you guys like this video, don't be afraid to uh, share and like it as well. If you guys want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Honestly, even if you guys don't want to watch the next video, hey, 
hit it anyways, it really helps us out. Um, if there's anything that you guys want to see, any questions you have about this firearm, the build, the reasons why I build it, and I didn't cover it in this video, go ahead and put those in the comments below, as well as any suggestions or any future videos you might want to see. Um, I'm always open to questions. Put all of that in the comments below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. As always, I'm your host, Frank Invet. Stay smart, stay safe, stay alive. This is the...